Dana Brisky is a documentary photographer and she came to Kolkata to photograph the lives of women who were working in the red light district. Now while she was there, she interacted with their children, she befriended them and she offered to teach them or share her knowledge of photography with them, just the basics. So what she did was she gave them cameras and they were taught how to click, how to frame, how to aesthetically look at a photograph and they were sent on the streets uh, to, uh, to visualize and tell stories of whatever appealed to them. They used to come back with the photographs, uh, with the negatives. She used to develop them and then used to sit down with them and discuss what they clicked and why they clicked. Um, now, what was beautiful about this was because as a photographer, you see the world uh, the way we've grown up. We have a very different way of viewing things. But over here, the stories were through the eyes of children who were often neglected, who were overlooked, who were just running around uh, from house to house doing household chores. Now, this was a moment for them which hopefully would maybe enable them to look at life in a different way and make others see what is happening in these houses, what is like to be uh, the child of a woman who you know, I mean, uh, when you see the documentary, it's a beautiful documentary. Ki parda laga ke mami jab humesha kaam karti hai, to ek parda laga lete hai, aur hum is side ho ke hum apna kaam karte rahte hai. So it's so normal, so called normal for them. And what the sad thing is that the girls, they know ki eventually this is what they have to become because they don't know any better. If they want to go to school, then they are not allowed because they want to know what parents do, what is criminal record, hai ki nahi, and so on. So, Zana Brisky, she was not a social worker, she was not a teacher, but this is something that she wanted to do. The photographs were then collected and there was an exhibition that happened in Kolkata where public and the media was invited and was a huge success. One of these boys from, the, uh, from her students who had not even stepped out of Kolkata, who knew the lanes of his, uh, only the lanes in and around his house. He did not have a ration card, forget about having a passport. He went on to represent India in a worldwide photo conference in Amsterdam. And for that, there were only nine students across the globe who were selected for this conference. Only because of Zana, who took that initiative and there was no motive involved. She just wanted to do it, but she changed the life of that boy. It's almost impossible to photograph in the red light district. It's a whole separate society within itself. I mean, you just walk down that one lane and it's another world. And of course, as soon as I entered the brothels, I met the children. They were all over me and I would play with them and take their photographs and they would take mine. That's when I thought it would be really great to teach them and to see this world through their eyes. From the perspective of eight children, led by the compassion of one woman. Take your time to look and make sure everything in the whole square looks good. She's really good at photographing on the street because she's very strong. The children ask me for help. They ask for it all the time. I mean, there's so little I can do. All I can do is try. There's so much information in this picture. It's just a beautiful photograph. I'm not a social worker. I'm not a, a teacher, even. But without help, they're doomed. These kids want to be out of there. Are there any boarding schools that would take them? No place is the right place. Nobody will take them. From the streets of Calcutta. My goal now is to raise money for them using their own photography. To an auction block at Sotheby's. Are you excited? Yes. Oh, they're all here. Amazing. I think he's reached a critical point. And if he doesn't get out of there really soon, he's lost. You and you and you have been accepted into a school. Eight children. People ask me, why do I come and do this work? There's no rational reason. Born into brothels. Gopala, Gopala. Learn to see, learn to create, learn to hope. Gopala, Gopala. 
Think Film presents the story of a courageous vision and the children who made it happen. Born into brothels. In another part of the world, in another year, in Memphis, there was uh, this tortured, without home, without any money, this boy called Michael. In the same city, there was a lady called Leanne. Michael was separated from his drug addict mother at the age of seven. He had no father. He went to the same school uh, as Leanne's children. So Leanne, one day she saw that Michael was in the campus and he was taking leftover food and eating that and saving that for uh, the next meal. So she went up to him and spoke to him and, uh, and realized that he has no place to stay, no money to buy any clothes and it was winter. So she invited him home and she gave him food, hope, her family. She then went to the school to speak to the teachers only to find out that in his career aptitude test, he had scored in negative. The score was really, really low. But in his protective instincts, he had got a 98 percentile. So what she did was that she used this characteristic, his this attribute and used that as a teaching method and changed him as a footballer. He used to play football. So I'm sure most of you maybe have seen this movie, but I just want to, yes. So, uh, I'm not cutting, I'm just asking. Let me tell you something, all right? We have been sitting around here for over an hour, and when I look around, all I see are people shooting the bull and drinking coffee. How can I help you? Oh, he was first. The, no, you go ahead. I think I want to hear this. Me too. You're right. Excuse me? You're right? How those words taste coming out of your mouth? Mike Vinegar. Who is that, SJ? Big Mike. He goes to high school here. What is he wearing? It's below freezing. Do you have any place to stay tonight? Don't you dare lie to me. Was this a bad idea? What's the big deal? It's just for one night. It is just for one night, right, Leanne? Tell me just one thing I should know about you. I don't like to be called Big Mike. Leanne, is this another one of your charities? We need to find out more about his past. Ah! He's been enrolled in seven different institutions. His grade point average begins with zero. He needs to do better in school. I'd love to work with him. This is mine? Yes, sir. Never had one before. What, a room to yourself? A bed. Michael's grades have improved enough that he can go out for spring football. How's he doing? I haven't quite gotten the hang of it yet. It's all really nice what you're doing, but don't be surprised if one day you wake up and he gone. I heard you got your new mama now. She's fine, too. Michael was here. Tell him to sleep with one eye open. You threatened my son. You threatened me. Sandra Bullock. We're in the middle of practice, Leanne. You can thank me later. This team is your family, Michael. You have to protect them. Tony here is your quarterback. You protect his blind side. When you look at him, you think of me. Yes, ma'am. SJ, you're going to want to get this. Mike's the best left tackle I've seen in years. You're changing that boy's life. No, he's changing my life. The blind side. I said you could thank me later. It's later, Bert. So Michael later went on to become an all-American footballer. Why am I showing you, why am I talking about these two films? Because A, they're drastically different from each other. First one is a documentary, so obviously it's about the real people. There are no actors portraying those characters. The second one is an out-and-out -out commercial film, which has the biggest Hollywood names. And that is based on a true story. So. What is common between both of them? Anybody? Human kindness. Correct. And there is no plan. You don't, okay. Like the Robin Hood army. It's a thing they do on Sundays. They don't know where it's headed, I'm guessing. But it's just that the intention is so pure that you start with that and you just keep on building on. Or what even Anu does. It is, 
you start with something you just ignite something in others and you have no clue where it will take you do you don't if you don't have the capacity to start let's say an ngo or you don't have money for something you see where can you start but do start i think all of us are matches and phosphorus paper in that way that all of us have the power to spark something in each other but do we how often do we do that when we go to uh, let's say every weekend when we go out drinking whoever goes out drinking and if you have a friend who is a non drinker how many of us have said how many times ki are tu peeta nahi hai ek glass to pee le come on yaar ek glass se kya hoga how many of us have done that smoking are ek drag yaar are it's cool ye wo itni thand hai itna maza aayega hum shimla mein ho wherever again but how many of us have pushed a friend or anybody or a parents that way for to follow a hobby or to maybe follow a dream that's great so but i just feel that somehow we are becoming uh, more selfish and self centered where we only think about ourselves this happens in my industry a lot i'm sure it happens in all the other industries as well where you're just thinking about yourself your growth how you're looking how your marriage is going to be but we should also think about others because trust me the benefits are just they are insane so it is basically peer pressure about bachpan mein hota hai ki marks kitne aa rahe hain dekho rinku ke zyada aa rahe hain tumhare kya hai or be it anything to be cool to be stylish how much money you are spending so there is peer pressure so why not make that peer pressure positive use it in a more creative more liberal more educative way. you don't have to be preachy you don't have to be that saint who's after somebody's life ki ye kyun nahi kiya wo kyun nahi kiya checklist banai no don't be that because then people are going to run away from you but you can definitely use it in a lot more positive way it's free of cost this is a product which is absolutely it comes from within you don't have to force it because if you force it it does not work it absolutely depends on your time and your will it's a chain reaction I would love to start a chain reaction and I'm sure all of us sitting over here isn't it exciting to think that something that you start will be followed by a lot of people just that feeling I think is one of the best feelings in the world good karma who doesn't want good karma I'm sure the Robin Hood army and Anu again they are already they've got gathered so much good karma and it's something that all of us can do with okay this is I trust me it's all research I'm not making this up if you are in a bad mood no matter what situation you are in but if you do something like igniting a spark in others it really really helps you become a, forget being a better human being but it just makes you lighter i'm not talking i'm not going into a, a saintly space at all though obviously it gives you inner peace and a longer lifetime and lower uh, lower uh, uh, blood pressure as well but again no cream in the world no soap in the world i do lots of ads but i'm telling you nothing can do the magic like this stronger friendships if you support people you love the bond just becomes bigger and better and stronger how to okay now obviously this is something when i when i'm saying this might sound very simple but what is the most important thing is the intention because if your intention is not there no matter how much you talk to somebody or how many times you repeat yourself it's not going to make a difference so the intention with which you talk is the most is a primary thing listen watch observe even in down to brothels born into brothels or blind side it's not like you can you cannot just go out and even if the intention is there if you want to help people you need to see who are the people you want to help there has to be a plan but also there cannot be a plan you can just go out and see what people are lacking or maybe share whatever knowledge you have with them how can you help in whatever capacity it could be uh it could be psychological it could be financial it could be physical it could be anything but it's not rocket science trust me do you know anyone else if you can't help anybody then if suppose you are not good in math and somebody needs math tuition then can do you know somebody else who can do that or again i'm giving the example of uh, the igniter uh, sitting over here because we've just heard about their wonderful stories it's a whatsapp group that they talk on like it doesn't get more basic and simple than that 
So if he is busy in the meeting, I'm sure there's somebody else who can go distribute the food. So it's very simple. All we need to do is get going. Follow up. Follow up is very important because uh, obviously sometimes you have bad days, sometimes you get work, there are prior commitments, there are personal commitments, but we need to follow up with each other also with ourselves. Share your knowledge in whatever possible way. It could be through what we are doing right now, sharing ideas and knowledge, or it could be on a one-to-one -one basis. But never think that the knowledge and the experience that you have will not help somebody. Trust me, everybody, or just hear people out and it will make a huge, huge difference. So that is it. I truly believe in this.